today we have with us Grace Kumar Ramaraju. So he will be presenting a talk on type check Django app. So over to you, Chris Kumar. Now, thank you. Uh, thanks, Kajetana. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk, uh, Type Check Django App, by Con 2021. I hope you're all having a good time. Uh, who am I? I'm Chris Kumar. I'm a software engineer based out of Bangalore, and I've been a volunteer to PyCon in the previous editions. I work for this company, Airbase. So Airbase is a single platform to manage all your uh, company specs. If in case you are interested, we are looking for developers. You can talk to me offline. Uh, for throughout this talk, I will be using Python 3.5 plus uh, syntax. And um, whenever I say a, a static type checker, I mean MyPy. And there are other static type checker available, but all of the code example and the concepts are very much tailored to uh, the standard uh, MyPy. And by default, Django version I'm using will be 3.2. Uh, and Django does not support uh, Python type ins natively. So we will be using a third party uh, plugin called Django Stuffs. Uh, types at runtime. Uh, so Python is a dynamically typed language, and uh, you don't need to give any type information to the interpreter. It can figure out all the type information and more details about the objects and its attributes, everything at runtime. But there are some, <coughs> excuse me, but there are some places where you need to know the types of an object. Uh, for that, you have an, uh, a function, inbuilt function called type. So type takes an argument and returns a, a value of the data or an expression which is passed on as an argument. So here is an example type. Uh, you pass a, a tuple to it, it returns output as a tuple. Uh, same concept if you apply to a Django user object, you filter the user dot objects dot filter and you pass a result to type function. What it does, it outputs query dot query query set. A type. Uh, uh, so review available my pi checker. Sorry about that. In type is a double during this will be only a runtime and during uh, run particular in type uh, uh, this a tube and and return elements in that. This is where the, the static type make type function. So MyPy by default work in an like level will be also interested in the action every element inside the so here uh, here is an example of a reveal type where you pass a result of a Django user objects filter. Now you can see what the function is returning. It returns as a user manager of user. This is a bug in Django stops module. It should be Django uh, a user query set of user. So MyPy config. Uh, uh, since MyPy is a third party library we install using a pip module, and now we need to configure MyPy to work for Django source code. The first thing, as I said, Django does not come with default type annotation for all the code. It is annotated in a third party plugin called Django stops. So now we need to tell the MyPy to load that plugin to look for all the types which are related to Django code. So how do we do that? In MyPy.ini configuration file, you have sections section called plugins. In that, you can mention what is the entry point for this particular Django stops module. Here we say MyPy Django underscore plugin dot main. That is the entry point for this plugin. And the next, we need to pass some configurational settings to this plugin because Django app uh, pretty much works uh, exclusively from starting from the setting. So you need to specify the settings uh, location. In our case, it is uh, if, if your app name is, say, book counter, you will specify book counter dot settings in the MyPy file. So MyPy internally will pass the settings variable to the plugin, and the plugin will work as expected and return the types of all the Django objects and uh, all the custom function uh, return values. So what is this annotation syntax? 
so python added uh, type annotation in 3.5 onwards and you can annotate your uh, uh, variables functions and classes uh, wherever there's a data holder and this is completely optional there is no it is not mandatory at all so what are the syntax if you uh, in python this, uh, to assign a value use a variable name and and equal to value so there's only one a little bit of change that is like uh, after declaring the name that is language colon str which denotes what is the type of the value and this type can be like any type it can be a inbuilt type or user defined type or it can be a composite types for an example second one is a very specific date type so here date is a class so it's going to be instance of date that is what it means year colon date means year variable will hold instance of date now let's go to the next example some function takes a two arguments and returns a value so the syntax is similar it has got two arguments both is of type integer so you mean you specify the types as a colon int b colon int and the return value as int so function can return more than one value if it returns more than one value you put a square bracket and, and say like what is the type of first return type what is the type of second return uh, next let's go to the class here is the initializer which has got three arguments name age and is alive uh, self is uh, self explanatory because we know it is going to be instant of person there's no need to annotate self and we have we annotated the uh, next uh, three arguments that is name age and is uh, alive attribute so annotating django code let's start with a simple view function and we'll see how to annotate then we'll move on to models uh, so here is a simple view function. So view function uh, takes in a, a request and returns a response. So how, how do we annotate the input arguments? The request is a HTTP request. So we import it from Django or HTTP, and we say the return type a HTTP response. So HTTP response is a uh, it is a proper super class of all the specialized uh, uh, responses like JSON response. So all the function will uh, take a HTTP request. Sometimes it will take more than one argument. In this case, it takes only one argument request and it returns a response. It's of type HTTP response. Here is another example. Uh, here we have a function called view404. Uh, the input is a HTTP request, but the response, if you see in three examples, the response type is uh, annotated in a slightly different way. If you return the, if you look at the body of this function, it, it returns only one thing, HTTP response not found. Uh, but the, these three are valid annotations which are accepted by MyPy. So let's try to see why these three return types are valid. So before getting into that, let's see what are the return types it is saying. First one, it is saying HTTP response not found. It is very clear to us. It's an instance of HTTP response not found. So it is OK that HTTP response uh, not found should be a correct one. Second one says like HTTP response as a return type. MyPy does not comply. Third one, uh, it says object. Now let's see why is this three, uh, why is there a three ways to annotate uh, annotate the function in three different ways. Python has this concept called method resolution or class. Method resolution order is a, a it is a way to specify. It is a way to know what is the inheritance chain of a class. So it starts from the child class to the parent class in a linear fashion. For example, if you see the HTTP response dot MRO, for in every class you will have this method called MRO. When I mean, you call that uh, MRO, it returns all the uh, classes in the from child class to parent class order. Uh, so the HTTP response is inherited in this order. HTTP response inherits HTTP response base. HTTP response base inherits object. If you see this MRO for HTTP response not found, it inherits HTTP response. HTTP response internally inherits HTTP response base and internally inherits objects. So this is the reason that PyPy did not comply, even though the return type of HTTP response not found. Even when the source code of the function was annotated to retain HTTP response base or object, it did not complain at all. So this is basically in alignment with the uh, concept uh, called Liskov substitution principle. So what Liskov substitution principle states is that in an object-oriented program, substituting a superclass object reference with an object of any of its subclass, the program should not break. Since uh, HTTP uh, response not found is a special uh, type of HTTP response, it did not complain that uh, this class is of two different types. That is the reason why MyPyk uh, accepted the type, type annotation. Next is Django models. Now let's see a simple create scenario. Uh, here is a simple model question, uh, which takes in uh, uh, two explicit uh, model fields. 
uh, model uh, question text is of character field, update is of date time field. We have a function create, uh, create question, which takes in a question string and returns a question. It is a simple way to create a uh, Django model and return. Uh, since uh, it is returning instance of question, we will we'll annotate the return type as a class name, which indicates it's going to return an instance of this particular class. Now let's do a read function. We have a simple uh, function called get question, which takes in a question text, which is of uh, type string and returns a question. And internally, it uses filter method. So if the question matches the uh, uh, questions in the database, it will be very first instance of the question. When you run this code against MyPy, MyPy complains uh, with one error. The error message is incompatible return value type, optional of any expected questions. Let's uh, take a look at how uh, objects.filter works. Object.filter is nothing but a var query where whenever the result is found, it return all the results. Since we are using dot first on it, it will return a question only when there is a match. If there is no match, it will return none. MyPay was exactly able to identify this, and it says optional. Optional uh, means none. Any means any instance which you return. Since uh, uh, object manager can't return anything, here it is very specific to question. What it is saying is, that get question is annotated to return question, but the source code or the return statement can return a none or question. Now, this is very fundamental uh, difference with how, how, how the dynamic behavior and static typing works. If you see like how can we solve this problem, MyPay already said that it can return optional of question. So what we will do, we'll import optional from typing module, and then you can say the return type of this function as optional of question. Uh, optional the square brackets uh, means uh, what is the type it will return optional means it can return none or question so all the uh, helper methods and uh, uh, attributes or the references for, for for typing is available in typing module this is one way to solve this problem there is another way to solve this problem using mypy config uh, so start something called as a uh, uh, strict underscore optional Strict underscore optional is a configuration parameter in this configurational file where you can uh, set that value to false. But then what it will do is whenever a function returns a none or an object, MyPay will not complain that uh, your function does not reflect that. For example, in our case, if you return this as a question, annotated as a question, and even though we didn't, didn't specify this optional of question, MyPay will not complain. So this is a very good uh, trade-off between a linear mode type checker versus uh, strict type checker, because depending on your source code and the level level of the maturity of your source code, you can decide to use one of the mode. To, to start with uh, type checking, you can start with a linear mode, like strict optional is equal to false. There are various other options. Once your code base reaches a very good maturity and you have a lot of type coverage, then you can go back to strict underscore optional and then set it to true you get the maximum mileage out of MyPy using such strict mode uh, configurations. So next is a filter method. So filter method is an object uh, is available on the object manager dot objects. So when you do uh, objects dot filter, you return a uh, Django returns a query set, and the query set contains uh, uh, model instances inside it. You can consider it like a list of values. So all the values inside the query set will be of the homogeneous type. That is, if you are using a user user dot objects dot filter, all the items inside it are going to be user objects. Or if you are going to use a group object, all the items inside the, the query set is going to be group. This is important how you will be access the Django or So here is an example. Uh, how do you annotate a function which returns a query set? Uh, similar to optional of question, we say query set of question, which means the return type is going to be a query set that is outer type and the inner type is going inner types which will contain will be the instance of question it, you can consider it like a box model where like a box is a query set items inside there are the model instances in our case it is going to be question some of the other methods which in, with returns query set in django or more like all reverse order by and union and there are a couple of other uh, um, methods on object manager which returns query set next we'll see an aggregate function the aggregate function is a way to uh, compress the data uh, in a database or in a table to return it is uh, return a very few values uh, 
for example, average is one such example. But to illustrate the use case, I have two models. The first model is a publisher model with one explicit field name of character field. And second one is book model with five explicit fields, sorry, six explicit fields, a name of character field, pages of integer field, prices of decimal field, rating is of load field, publisher is of foreign key to publisher model, and pub, publish date, pub date is a, uh, pub, pub date is of uh, date field. So here is an uh, get average function. What it does is like in the books model, it tries to give the average price of the all the books in that particular table. Uh, since it is a compressing or summarizing the data, it will return only one value. So now AVG underscore price is equal to average. So AVG is a uh, is a keyword here. So when the return when this function returns a value, returns a value as a dictionary where key is the query expression that is AVG underscore price. Value is the type of the uh, field uh, of the of the field price. So in our model declaration, the price is of decimal field. Hence the compressed value or the summarized value is a decimal value. Now let's try to annotate this particular function. Since we know the return type is a dictionary, we can say uh, the return type as dictionary, but we need to annotate what is the type of the uh, of the key and what is the type of the value. The key is going to be average underscore uh, price and the value is going to be decimal. So we will annotate it as uh, string comma decimal. Uh, always the type of key goes in the first and followed by a comma and then the value of the type is uh, or a data. Next, let's see the annotate method. Uh, so Django annotate method is nothing but a group by query. You group by uh, you group by items in a table by a particular column and you either do some sort of aggregate function like count star or average of all those. So in our case, we have already a publisher model. What we will do is we'll try to find number of books published by each publisher. So what we do, we are going to do a, uh, we are going to use annotate method. So publisher.objects.annotate. I'm going to take a sip of water. So publisher.objects.annotate. It is going to annotate all the, uh, uh, books published by a particular publisher by name and prints a number of books. <clears throat> so if you see the output of this function, it is going to return more than one value because there are more than one publisher in the, <clears throat> because there are more than one publisher in the um, uh, database. So you can see the uh, values. It looks like a dictionary list of dictionaries. Since we are using list comprehension, that's why it is represented as a list. So it is going to contain a name and number of books by each publisher. And there are two, two publishers, so we have two rows. There is it. Now returning a query set. Uh, so now we have slightly modified the count by publisher function rather than uh, annotating or returning all the values of the num books, everything. We just make sure it returns a query set. On top of that, we have one more function called print pub, which takes an argument num books and prints the number of books which are greater than specified value, only those publisher details. Else it prints the all the publisher details. So let's have a look at the print pub function. That's got an if condition and then a for loop. If condition uh, uh, has got, a, if it is greater than zero, the num books is greater than zero. Then we filter the publishers who have published more than the uh, uh, passed in value. And then we store the result in, uh, uh, in a result variable. Same thing in the else case, uh, we are not doing any filtering. And uh, once we have the result, we iterate over the results and we print the name and the number of books published by each publisher. So the output will look uh, something like this. So penguin two and vintage one. So this is not a dictionary. Now let's try to annotate this particular uh, uh, no mm, uh, function. So count by publisher, since we know it returns more than one value, we will uh, we will annotate it as an iterable of published book count. In the previous example, you, you saw like it looked like a dictionary. It had two attributes. So what I will do is I will do, uh, I will create a class called published book count, which inherits from the type dict. So type dict is a, a, is a super class of uh, dict. What it does is like whenever you know uh, the uh, keys of a dictionary and values, uh, which is of a static uh, dictionary you can consider. We know that dictionary will contain only two uh, keys and we know what is the name, you know, what is the type. So what we do is we create a new class called published book count. The key value is name and the value uh, against that key is going to be string. 
numbooks is the key and uh, integer is going to be the the value contained in that uh, dictionary item right now we annotate iterable of published count that means like we are going to have some kind of a uh, uh, iterable uh, container where you can put a for loop and each item is going to represent published book count once you run this against mypy mypy complaint is a two set of errors the first one it says is like uh, i got query set of any expector iterable of published book count so what mypy is saying is that you annotated the function to uh, return annotator annotation says it's a iterable of published book count but whereas from the source code since annotate method returns a query set mypy is complaining that this function count by publisher is returning a query set of uh, any but not of iterable or published count that is quite understandable what is the second error second error is building upon the very first error the iterable or published count has no attribute filter so what it is saying is like in the for loop you not in the for loop in if block you have a filter condition uh, which further filters the result so it says like the iterable does not have a method called filter but we are accessing the object with a filter method so mypy um, caught these two errors now let's see the validity of this error uh, whatever mypy uh, is complaining seems to be legit let's see how we can fix these two errors the first is since mypy is saying the return type of count by publisher is going to be a query set let's change the annotation of this function to uh, from iterable of published book count uh, to a query set of publisher and then when we run, let's run the mypy when you do that the mypy now uh, complains with only one error the first error is gone that's a second error now what it is saying is the publisher model has no attribute num books this is com coming from the uh, for for statement where we are iterating over the result and printing each uh, rows values right now it is saying the publisher model had only one field the uh, one uh, one attribute called name but there is no attribute called num books if you have worked with django uh, for so far you would understand the code what we wrote is legit because num books is a attribute field which is inserted on the fly by django or but we don't have to declare that field in django models so it is a very legit code it will properly if you run a test case it will pass if you run it in, in production it will work but mypy being a static type checker it does not understand the dynamic behavior of django because django is inserting this attribute num underscore books at runtime at python runtime right so now mypy is unable to understand this magic mypy complains that there is no no attribute called num underscore books which is which is which is not declared in publish so right now this is causing mypy confusion now how do we fix this so this is actually a bug in django uh, stubs project but there is a solution uh, Uh, for us at the time of preparing the slides uh, there was a bug right now this bug is fixed but if you are using some uh, older version of uh, type uh, django stubs project you will uh, encounter the same bug there's a solution for this how what we do is there is a if condition you can use it so from typing module you can import something called type checking this type checking is a boolean uh, flag if you put if type checking this particular piece of code will be only executed inside mypy so when you try to run this code in uh, using python interpreter what would happen is the if block will not be executed at all since we know certain portions can be executed only by mypy what we will do is we'll say type checking if type checking and what we'll do is we'll create a new class called type publisher which inherits a publisher and we'll add a new attribute called num underscore books is our field integer field right now what is happening now we have created a new model which has got a uh, name and num books now we'll name the now we'll add a meta configuration called abstract is equal to true now we'll change the annotation to query set of type publisher and now when we run this code with mypy mypy will not complain at all this is uh, because right now the uh, during type annotation type um, uh, mypy sees the type publisher it sees two attributes name and num books which satisfy all the condition and it goes through Uh, some of the tools. Uh, so there, uh, if you're starting to annotate a Django project, it can become very hard to annotate a, a large piece of code. So what we can do is there's a tool called Py Annotate. Uh, Py Annotate is a tool which can in, which can infer the uh, types of Django object during runtime and convert it to MyPy types. 
you can uh, you can use a pytest plugin called pytest annotate where you can run this uh, so python source code and infer the types during test time and then use it to uh, annotate this uh, existing source code here is a function which we saw earlier that's got no type information now what you do is like you write some test cases for that uh, particular function which invokes uh, all the all the code you wanted to uh, annotate and then what you do is you run uh, django settings module uh, uh, like this so i'm using poetry you pass an extra options called annotate output it will store the all the uh, outputs in annotation.json file and the output looks something like this you have the path what is the function name what is the type annotation of that function info during runtime and then what you can do is you can um, uh, apply the changes once the test case is done you can say py annotate uh, annotate this particular file that is views.py file from this annotation file of python 3 syntax uh, this is quite useful tool it will help you to get some kind of uh, coverage from zero to some explicitly this is how the code looks the code looks legit it can handle imports but there will be some changes you definitely require from your end after uh, seeing the coverage and the last uh, part of this presentation is learning resource i come up with the project called python typing chaos so python typing chaos is a interactive way to learn python type annotation to learn all the concepts in gradual typing in python you need the python code with a proper structure so that this git repository has classified all the code into three sections python django and drf you can run each file uh, using this command line option and it will it will print out all the errors in mypy and as a learner you go you open the source code and you look into what is the error and try to modify the type hints or add the missing type hints and then you run the code you reduce the errors from from 5 to 3 from 3 to 1 at the end of this uh, once you solve this problem you will understand how that particular uh, concept works in mypy and uh, thank you uh, in case you have any doubts i'm happy to take a question these are my contact details Thank you, Chris Kumar, for the wonderful talk on uh, type checking. So we have some questions from the audience. Right. So the first question is, how do you decide whether or not you should add type checking in a Django app? Uh, so that, that's a good question. Like uh, if you if you say like that, the camp for type hints in Python is divided into two territories. People say I don't want type hints. People say I want type hints. So my I, uh, uh, view in this is like, is your source code large? First of all, when you say large, it is like uh, say like you, you have like five six apps. You have some forty fifty uh, Django models, and it is growing every day. It is going one. Second, how long this project will be active? Is it going to be active for what to say like next two years, three years? Third is like, is it just a pet project or not? So my um, uh, fourth point is, is there more collaborators? So in my opinion, if your project is going to last longer and if there is going to be more collaborators, I have seen there's a lot of value for type hints in Python because it helps you to catch lot, lot of bugs before even writing test cases, which I find to be useful. And also it helps in navigating a larger piece uh, code base and it also improves the readability. But if you're only one person writing on a small project, then you can decide not to use it because there's a lot of overhead in adding type hints as well. So you have to uh, see what is the trade-off and when to add type hints to a project. Yeah. Thank you. So let me check whether we have any additional question here. Okay. Okay. There is one more question you can take up. So the second question is, what's the standard way to annotate pandas data frames? So I use pandas data frame. Haven't checked with MyPy. Uh, so as I said, as I said earlier, like pandas by default does not support type hints. That is, when I said by default means in the source code when they write pandas library, there is very less support for what to say pandas data frame. What is that type? So there are third party libraries which which maintain stubs for uh, what to say for uh, numpy for scikit-learn for data what to say for pandas so you have to use one of those third-party libraries as a plugin how i showed for django and you can start annotating your data frame using uh, 
those libraries and it will help you to get to a decent level i cannot guarantee that all of the features in panda or all of the panda uh, source code you will be able to annotate using those library uh, but it is catching up and as i said it is not even complete in, in standard library itself